Hello, here is a coronal section of the brain and uh, we can see two cerebral hemispheres and this is part of the corpus callosum. So this would be the region of the lateral ventricles. There is a very large ill-defined irregular mass lesion located in one of the cerebral hemispheres which stretches from the cerebral cortex deeper towards the underlying white matter. The actual outline of this mass is rather irregular, but also it's very ill-defined. I can't actually see exactly where it ends and where the normal brain begins. If we look at the cut surface, it appears to be pale, tan, pinkish in color. It is not very different from the texture of the rest of the brain, um, but we also see some heterogeneous areas uh, for example, we can see some paler, more geographic areas over here, and these likely represent areas of necrosis. So there is a mass lesion, and this represents a tumor, and it is ill-defined. It has got areas of necrosis and some areas of cavitation, and it also appears to be very, very close to the lateral ventricle, and it's possible that the ventricle has been involved. In this instance, sampling of the cerebrovascular fluid may actually show tumor cells. Because of the location of this tumor right within the brain parenchyma, and also the gross appearance where it's quite smooth in terms of the texture and the cut surface, this is likely to represent a glial tumor. And this is in contrast to a meningioma, which is another primary intracranial tumor, which usually shows a much sharper demarcation between the tumor and the brain parenchyma. Here we have a side-by-side -side comparison showing an example of a meningioma. You can see that it's very much more sharply demarcated from the rest of the brain and also it has a different appearance on the cut surface. Uh, it is somewhat browner and it's got these pale areas, it's got almost world appearance or texture on the cut surface as opposed to this glial tumor which you can see is uh, much more ill-defined and has a more homogeneous cut surface. So by looking at this tumor, which is likely to be a glial tumor, we can actually conclude a few things. First of all, the tumor is large in size and therefore it is likely to be of a worse prognosis. And secondly, the fact that there is necrosis and cavitation, probably secondary to necrosis, means that this tumor is likely a high-grade tumor. So in summary, here is an example of an ill-defined irregular mass in the brain parenchyma occupying both the grey and the white matter. It has a fairly homogeneous cut surface which is pale pinkish tan in colour and there are areas of necrosis and cavitation indicating likely a higher grade tumour. Examples of glial tumours include astrocytomas as well as oligodendrogliomas.